Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Wolverine number 31 cover dated late September 1990. So the comic around this time was coming out every couple of weeks. So quite the schedule for the new team to come on board. And the new chapter in the life of the Berserker mutant is all about the arrival of Larry Hama as writer on the book and superstar artist from Uncanny X-Men, Mark Silvestri coming over with his inker too, Dan Green. So we've got this new creative team on board and they will stick together for the next two years before Silvestri jumps ship to co-found Image Comics. And it is a quite the run on the title. And this is a really striking cover to begin with. So we've got that dark black background. We've got these dark blues and purples on the cover as well. But Wolverine front and center and in a berserker fury. So very memorable that look. Here we've got Tiger Tiger it will turn out. And we've got a new um, antagonist for Wolverine. A Yakuza crime lord called uh, Daikumo. And then these are some of his uh, lieutenants here and they're whacked out on a new drug um, which we'll learn a little bit more about in the issue itself so let's open this one up to the splash page and we do indeed get a splash page here and i've got some things to say about this particular splash page number one uh, this is mark silvestri enjoying himself and we have in it a setting, so we've an establishing shot. We're in the Princess Bar, Madripoor, Lowtown Madripoor. So this is a bar that um, Wolverine in his alter ego as Patch um, co-owns with um, another person. So he is the owner there and he's sitting at the bar and it rather evokes for me the vibe and um, feel of 1940s noir films. I'm thinking in particular of Casablanca and um, yeah, it's an interesting opening uh, with uh, the first person narration that will be a trademark of Larry Hama's writing of the character for many years to come. So it opens, that old rhyme slinger Bobby Frost said that the fog creeps in on little cat feet. In my book, trouble always comes stomping in the front door sporting size 12 brogans, especially in Madripoor's low town and doubly especially in waterfront hangouts like the Princess Bar. So that's quite a hard-boiled opening to this particular issue. Another thing to note about the art is Mark Silvestri has said that he doesn't like using straight lines, doesn't like a ruler, and even though he might have in blue pencil used um, some tools in order to grid out this space, it could equally be the case that he's done it by eyeball. And certainly Dan Green and the Inks is not using any ruler. This is all inked uh, freehand. So it really gives the, um, a particular feel, an inhabited feel to the location. Um, less, you know, like it's not about hard angles, it's not about clean lines, it's about this kind of grimy, gritty uh, line work and feel that you get from the art here. So the title of the story is Killing Zone. This is really part one of a three part um, or a three issue storyline. The creative team with the headline there, A New Era of Greatness, brought to you by Larry Hammer Ryder, Mark Silvestri Penciler, Dan Green Inker, Pat Brousseau Letterer, and Glynis Oliver coming over from Uncanny X-Men as well to colour Silvestri here. So this is um, a creative team, are, you know, in terms of the visuals, Silvestri, Green and Oliver, that have worked together for many years, and it shows in the resulting product here. So this new run, uh, this new creative direction really it hits the ground running it works from the very beginning i love all the little details here from the smoky um rendering for the ceiling up here behind the title of the uh, uh the title of the story itself the bartender here in the foreground drawing one of the glasses there the kind of bits and pieces here on the bar counter itself including the ashtray with Logan's um, cigar there smoking away. And this guy, Archie Corrigan, his friend, pouring out a shot for him um, from a single malt. And I like the dialogue too. Like something else as well about this um, particular title is the price point. Look, it's $1.75, whereas a regular Marvel comic at the time would be $1. Now, some of the money is going towards a higher grade of paper, so you get a cleaner production reproduction rather of the art and in particular the color the color looks brighter and sharper than it does on the equivalent newsprint 
um, comics that are at the one dollar price point but something else as well is that that higher price point a dollar 75 is almost like a barrier to admission maybe for some of the younger readers um, comics readers at the time so this title is something that if you're an older uh, reader like somebody who's 16 plus that has a part-time job or if you're in college and you also have a part-time job this is a comic that you can afford and it's pitched at a older reader I would say or at least it's coded so that the older reader feels like this is an adult oriented storyline it's all comics code approved of course but it just has that different vibe and style from a um, um, a Marvel comic of the period that's clearly and squarely aimed at you know 10 and 12 year old uh, readers and I like the little bit of dialogue here where um, Wolverine says this hooch ain't half bad Archie uh, even if it does taste like charcoal briquettes so Larry Hama um, a um, uh, what would I say like um, a um, someone um, who enjoys um, whiskey and knows a little bit about it which comes out in the dialogue coming back to uh, Logan here from um, Archie Corrigan it's 10 year old Islay malt and it's supposed to taste like but then he's interrupted trouble and I have had those uh, Petey Briquette tasting whiskies I've at least I've tasted them not to my taste same as Logan as well not for me tastes like trouble he says now we turn the page and yeah this is another really well drawn as you would expect page here I like the decision to go with the full horizontal page wide panels as well and Archie says to Logan Yakuza Japanese gangsters a whole busload the one in front is staring at your back as if he dated his sister and left her tied to the tree see what I mean about that kind of adult oriented dialogue that one's going to go over the head of a 10 year old but there's um, quite a dark edge to that um, uh, analogy there um, or simile uh, from Corrigan but Logan has smelt them from a block away one of the advantages of being a mutant's heightened senses I caught a whiff of the gun oil the squid ink from their tattoos and the pickled daikon radish on their breaths now I can hear the rapid heartbeats and sense the adrenaline rush of men who are about to commit dangerous and violent deeds so Logan drinks up better get scarce Corrigan I hear you he says as he scrambles away and then he's challenged by the accuser you at the bar are you and I like this dialogue as well from Hama are you the hairy barbarian sometimes known as Patch and sometimes known as Rogan Rogan huh that's rich he says in your language ro can mean old age and dissipation and gan can mean cancer he means Japanese together they add up to death and if you're looking for death you've come to the right place so what a great page what a great little scene and the way that he turns his head and looks over the shoulder of his suit it looks great it's fantastic work from um, the new team and now look at this establishing shot outside the bar as Corrigan backs out one of the back doors all of this very much done freehand as well but the perspective works Glennis Oliver's colors work really well um, showing the light um, um, uh, flooding out onto the rain soaked nighttime street it looks so good but Corrigan is interrupted there by the way he's not a coward he has a plan to go back to the airstrip he's a pilot and grab his double du double barrels uh, 12 gauge shotgun in order to help uh, Logan out but he's interrupted he bumps into this huge y Yakuza Goro is his name and he says the little man thinks he's amusing Raiko Chan he should be twice as amusing in two pieces so he gets ready to cut Corrigan in half but his blade the arc of his blade is interrupted by Raiko she says let him go Goro he's the pilot our boss may have uses for him so she's thinking ahead strategically and this is what he says he says go little man Quanon, goddess of mercy Japanese goddess has smiled upon you tonight and um, Silvestri doing so very well here rendering believable Asian looking physiognomy as well and um, with various expressions too he's so well able to draw these varying body types and as I said ethnic features as well amazing stuff and then the tilted angle here as Corrigan runs off um, so 
Raiko says to Goro, it's time to return to the palace. And we're going to get a little look at who's up in the palace shortly. But we go back to the princess bar. And uh, these three, the dra dragon head and his two lieutenants walk away, instructing the younger Yakuza members to kill the barbarian. So Wolverine still hasn't turned around. He's still sitting on his bar stool. And so they open fire on him. That's a great panel there with the muzzle flare. And again, Glynis Oliver's lighting of the scene too. So they blow apart the stool, but Logan's gone. He's gone. Nothing human could have moved that fast, they say. Hurry, we don't, dragon what we don't want Dragonhead coming back in to check on us. He didn't just evaporate, spread out, find him. So here's Logan. He's leapt over the bar counter and he's uh, ducked down here behind the counter itself and uh, the broken barrels of beer are pouring out in his head that's really well done by Silvestri as well and we get his first person narration and what's he concerned about well it's not his uh, physical safety ruined brand new custom tailored shan tongue silk and it's ruined i knew i should have stuck to long island iced teas that fancy single malt threw off my timing so that's pretty funny stuff dry wit from uh, larry hammer's uh, first person narration for Logan there and something else that I want to note is that in this time period in the X-Men continuity of the period Wolverine Claremont is writing Wolverine as having a slowed down healing factor so his healing factor isn't operating um, as well as it has done when he was younger and Claremont had a storyline that he was developing in that regard, that Wolverine was dying, never got to uh, complete it because of his quitting um, uh, the X-Men and Marvel, more or less, with Uncanny X-Men 279. So that was never fulfilled. But it is part of what's going on with Logan in 1990. So that's something to remember. It means that he's more vulnerable, despite the healing factor. So this guy comes up to the bar, this is a great little scene as well, just across these three panels, where this little Yakuza member comes up to check in on the corpse. You down there, Gaijin, he says, time to die. And we get a little editorial note here, which is interesting, uh, that Gaijin in Japanese means white man. So Wolverine pops his claw. So we see his fist there, ready to pop it. And then we get the uh, switch of focus onto his face um, in shadow, just with his eye um, showing there. That trademark sound effect snicked and uh, Logan saying right you are bub it's time for him to die and so the blades go right through the mahogany bar counter and into the chest of the Yakuza you not me says Logan in his first person narration the rest of them are trying to figure out what kind of blade can slice through a mahogany bar top like it was Tofuti they're about to find out the hard and painful way look at that as he leaps over the bar counter and over the corpse of the young yakuza member but also look at the detail of the wrinkling on the suit and shirt of the yakuza member like that is excellent work from Silvestri, but again dan green and the inks as well like that takes time to master how to do that how to do drapery how to do wrinkles and folds of suits and so on and so forth now we get a scene switch to the palace that was mentioned by Raiko earlier. So that's really well done there. And again, you can imagine that Silvestri is eyeballing this. He's not using a straight edge for that. And then interesting hatching there from Dan Green um, in the inks as well. No solid blacks. So it's perfectly open for Glynis Oliver to use her color palette there. Um, so what a scene here, um, an open border panel. So this guy's extracting a protein catalyst from the brain of this spider monkey and it yields a serum as Daikumo he's the Yakuza crime lord there smoking his cigar and drinking his whiskey that yields a serum that has been found to arrest carcinoma and human test subjects so here's Tiger Tiger right um, Jessan um, Hoan and she was created co-created by Mark Silvestri and Chris Claremont all the way back in Uncanny X-Men 229 and at the end of that issue she went through the uh she went through the siege perilous and she emerged as a crime boss um so her kind of like character was changed because the siege siege perilous going through it it would weigh up uh like the moral quality of your soul and you would be um in a sense ejected into a life uh that uh that that kind of like matched 
the siege perilous's judgment on the lightness or darkness of your soul so she emerged as this um, um crime boss operating out of madripoor so uh daikumo says here when she says a cure for cancer you test our credulity daikumo he says the exquisite tiger sama doubts your findings dr malur and the doctor says this data or sorry rather the data the data is irrefutable and open to your perusal and tiger says i see that the monkeys do not survive the extraction procedure this is a great panel here with the uh, hands and the hypodermic needle um, releasing the serum into this um, into this uh, what would we call it like vessel here uh, and the doctor says so they're just monkeys beasts my employer daikumo seeks to market a serum that can save countless lives oh well that sounds great lives of wealthy people who would pay fabulous sums to any who could prolong their corporeal existence um and this is the prince here actually and the, uh, he's got a general there at, around the table as well what concern is this to us says the general patience my good general koi patience so all is going to be revealed about what is going on here on this particular page. So basically the idea is to uh, get the uh, serum off of Madripoor to Japan and there to be no uh, tariffs and time consuming government inspections. So that's what it's all about. But uh, Tiger Tiger says the mountain tribesmen will be furious conservationists Will be up in arms about the capture of the spider monkeys and if the general population were to discover that the mega rich were monopolizing a cancer cure these are formidable obstacles even for a man who wears the tattoo of a yakuza clan so brazenly on his face like that spider tattoo but look at this panel of tiger tiger this is mark silvestri remember he's uh, the creator of her visual look back in uncanny x-men 229 but he's been looking at how John Bushima drew her in Marvel Comics Presents and in issues, the early issues of the Wolverine, of this particular Wolverine series as well. Um, that is pure Bushima, that channel, that, that particular panel there. Look at those cheekbones, look at the nose as well. Pure Bushima. And um, it's like a little tribute of Silvestri to Bushima. And of course, Bushima. Uh, figures large in Silvestri's uh, artistic DNA um, and again look at the rendering of the different facial types as well by Silvestri such a master but then the star of course Daikumo uh, like doesn't have any problems with any of what she um, raised there as um, possible obstacles he's unconcerned with all of that and then we go back to the princess bar this is a great page here so we've got Wolverine going into a berserker fury i should hate myself when i get like this everything goes red don't even know if i'm talking or just howling and glennis oliver matching the narration with the red palette here something that goes all the way back to uncanny x-men 133 when we saw him in that berserker fury in the hellfire club and when she used red to convey uh his emotional state and the violence of action as well so that's a great panel there as this yakuza member breaks a chair right over wolverine's back i gave the killers their warning they could have walked back out the way they came it's their choice living and dying you think it'd be easy that's a great and interesting choice by Silvestri here to vary the visuals by pulling the camera so to speak back so we get to see the huge crowd around logan that he's managing to uh, handle and push back but then this guy opens up with a machine gun he's underestimated my speed and strength says wolverine in his first person uh, narration so this is a really cool panel as well where he uh, uses his adamantium claws to cut right through that pillar um, whether whether it's wooden or whether it's uh, concrete so he guts the guy and then this yakuza says the ceilings the beams that was a structural pillar so half the princess bar comes right down on top of them look at that again it looks like he must have been looking at photo reference for that particular face but i love the layout of the figures here up down and over here with this guy uh, mostly in silhouette interesting interesting um variation of the visuals um great shot here or um you know like panel with uh, this guy letting rip with the machine gun shooting wolverine in the back great spawning of blacks there as well and he falls to the ground just like a deadfall to the ground a blinding whiteness and blackness 
that's really well done. Difficult to do that, like a face lying on the ground like that, but Silvestri does it so well. And then the scene switches to Lowtown Corrigan after his encounter with Goro and Raiko has made his way to um, a police car, but the guys have been paid off. They've got brand new Rolex watches not to investigate any disturbance at the Princess Bar. And Corrigan figures so is everybody in the city, in Lowtown at least. So he decides he's going to ring Tiger Tiger. Time to call in old markers. Just something as simple as this. Look at this panel here where he's in the telephone box. And then you've got like the perspective from this side alley. You've got the neon signs there. You've got people walking in the rain with somebody with an umbrella up. Um, the rubbish bins here, the trash cans here um, to the side. So well done. And Glenn Oliver just lighting it in green like that. So he's on the phone to Tiger, but it's not Tiger. It's one of her maids dressed in a French maid's costume. That's Silvestri, eh? He's um, always got a little bit of kinkiness in his um, art. But I also like the way that uh, Larry Hama here does the dialogue for her. She's not here. She's at the palace. You got pushed with the prince. You call there. Goodbye. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so well done. So Corrigan's got more work to do if he's going to get some help for Logan. This is a great page here. Six panels. This guy coming up um, on the unconscious Logan with his um, with a samurai sword. Sticks it in his back. That wakes Logan up. Look at the popped eye there as well. And he's enraged. He snaps the blade um, with his back. Like flexing his back. He snaps the blade and pulls... Uh, the front of it out and he says I survived a sword cut from the great Shingen himself that's a reference to the original 1982 Wolverine miniseries by Claremont and um, Frank Miller um, you little backstabber uh, are nowhere near a match for him and I like that look there as he turns and looks over his shoulder of his ruined suit yeah it's so good and the spotting of blacks there like the shadow cast by his shoulder over half of his face. So he throws the end of the blade through the guy. Really, really well done. Here's your blade back. No exclamation point, just a statement of fact. Here's your blade back. What's the matter? Can't catch? Very good. So pops his claws. These guys still haven't given up on taking him out. They blast away at him. That's a really nice panel there. He leaps up into the air. He says, I should run and hide. Give the old bod time to renew itself. But that ain't my style, not my style at all. So Wolverine is not going to run. He's going to take these guys on, even though he's weakened. Another great page here. So the Princess Bar, the roof is kind of falling in. He's gone up on top of the roof. They're blasting at the ceiling, hoping to catch him. And then he comes down deliberately through. And look at that. Look at the red that Glynis Oliver's um, colored him in. And he is roaring as he's coming through the roof coming at them with his blades popped. And that's the image from the cover. That's what uh, Silvestri is drawing in more detail on the cover. That moment, Wolverine coming through the ceiling in a berserker fury. Well, you wouldn't want that dropping in on you. So then the scene switches to the palace again and the, uh, the wheeling and dealing and uh, the conference with the prince here at the head of the table, Tiger and Daikumo. And Daikumo gets whispered news from um, Goro. I left Dragonhead and 20 men at the Princess Bar. They should be finished by now. And the head Goro, because Daikumo wanted uh, Logan's head, they were told to bring it. So he's pondering that. And then he says to um, Tiger Tiger here, My intentions are but to ensure windfall profits for all concerned, most exquisite lady. The matter of Patch is quite moot. It has already been dealt with because she said earlier that Patch would have a problem with the spider monkey business. Exactly who is in charge around here, your highness? She turns to the prince and he retorts, you would do well to keep a civil tongue among your betters, tiger. Let us just say that there has been a previous arrangement. So what could that be? And by the way, this costume that Tiger Tiger is wearing, this was designed by John Bushima. So Silvestri... Um, you know, um, uh, and a, a, that great admirer of Bushima, like tipping his hat to him by having her dressed in that particular costume. He must have enjoyed drawing it and having the opportunity to do so. So then we're back to the princess bar. 
this guy uh, knocked out the window there that's a great uh, shot hits the uh, windshield on the side of the limousine so Dragonhead recognizes his failure the underlings have disgraced themselves so he decides it's time for Raiden the drug Malur concocts from the brains of monkeys time to ride the Thunderbolt time to go where no man has gone before to the far border of sanity and beyond no pain no fear no conscious conscience it doesn't need to cure cancer it does better than that it cures life and look at the change in the coloring as well from Glenn Soliver showing this yellow madness that's descended on them and the red eyes too they look absolutely crazy like they've gone pure bananas um, and then we're back at the palace and Tiger has left the meeting and her Ferrari is out in the rain and she thinks it's like some kind of snub she says is this another insult from the prince why is my Ferrari left out in the rain the royal carports are full my lady says um, the servant there have been recent additions to his highness's automotive stable so now she gets it this explains the prince's eagerness to please Daikumo the arrangement that's being made solid gold additions I see so Daikumo's watching her drive off and he says that one will take watching and you shall do the watching Goro watch nothing more not yet back at the princess bar Logan has defeated everyone his suit has been completely shredded from him and in come, comes Dragonhead and his two lieutenants turning your backs to me hope it's not my breath he says it is the way of the Yakuza to display our tattoos to formidable foes says Dragonhead gaze upon the dragon Ryu he rises out of the east and that's why he's called Dragonhead because he's got the head of the dragon tattooed on his back bearing madness before him I'm not impressed says Logan I knew a sailor who could make the hula girl on his bicep do the hoochie coo <laughs> great stuff from Hama don't mock says this look at the mad look in his eye don't mock the others were nothing they feared death they had hopes we this we is missing there in the lettering we are riding the thunderbolt we are beyond that so now we're coming to the climax of the issue like the fight has been going on for the whole of the issue really but now this is like up against the boss so to speak so Wolverine pops his claws once more and skewers the two lieutenants you think getting impaled on my claws is funny they're laughing all the time don't you see see the joke your claws are trapped they're useless leaving you open for the killing stroke so this is like a suicide thing these guys are kamikaze um, make way I need to uh, step in deep to get the leverage says Dragonhead so he's caught Wolverine in the shoulder with his blade and he's going to try and take his head off but Wolverine of course says that sword's going to stop as soon as it hits an adamantium lace bone and you made a real big mistake bub getting this close to me so wow what a scene minutes later uh, Tiger arrives in her Ferrari to the princess uh, princess bar Archie's just arriving at the same time he's got his 12 gauge shotgun double barrel shotgun and they kick open the door he kicks open the door and the place is a charnel house so Tiger's wondering what happened to those those insane grins looks like something was embedded in them and sawed its way out the lieutenants there's a blood trail here leading out to the back into the alley and down to the docks and look at that that's fantastic we can see right out the back door of the bar and we can see how Sylvester has established the docks there just very simply just with the the hull of the ship there and a kind of a suggestion of the sea and more skyline I think that's um, high town in the background there yeah so interesting and then like it's the final showdown between Dragonhead and Logan happening out on the docks so this is a suicide mission so Dragonhead pulls out two grenades opens the pins takes out takes out the pins and runs at Logan and pulls the pair of them over into the into the into the water just as Corrigan and Tiger Tiger arrive and look at the way that Sylvester has drawn Tiger Tiger's cloak there it looks so good and um, the, uh, the the placement of the shadows as well and the lighting it's really really good stuff 
So now we're underwater, we get the perspective underwater and Logan's thinking death grip, won't let go. Even underwater, the crazy laughter doesn't stop. It's, it's crazy. So Corrigan points, like this isn't the end of it. The shark's out there as well. Homing in, he says, on the blood, like lawyers on a train wreck. And then everything goes quiet. Uh, and Tiger asks him, or, uh, you know, asks, uh, addresses him by his name, but in a questioning way, Archie, you don't think I'm jumping in there. Hey, I like the little dude, but he ain't my mom. Then the two grenades go off. So, is this the end of Logan? Of course it isn't. The sharks... Uh, float up to the top of the water, headless, their heads blown off. But what happened to Logan? He grabs her by the leg. Look at the way that Silvestri has drawn those legs. So simply done, but so effective. And now we have a shot of Logan pulling himself up on the pier. And um, yeah, how did he do it? The sharks were hungry, so I handed them the Yakuza grenades and all. That's what happened. I'm in a world of hurt, Archie. He says, being messed up pretty bad. Might take a bit longer than usual to heal up. Me and Tiger will take you to a safe hidey hole, says Corrigan. And I'll fix you up a shot of single malt. Thanks, but no thanks. So we're right back to the beginning with that single malt, that peaty, uh, briquette tasting single malt. And Logan <laughs> not, doesn't want that. No thanks. And now we've got Goro. He did trail uh, Tiger Tiger. He's alive, Goro, says Raiko. And you told Daikumo he was taken care of. He will be, Raiko, he says. I'll take care of him myself. So well done. Everything, the inking here, done with a brush. Such a master was Dan Green. Such a pity uh, that he died last year, 2023. So, there you go. What an opening to this new creative team combination. Larry Hama. Uh, working now with Mark Silvestri, Dan Green, and Glennis Oliver on the book. Really, really good stuff. And as I said, this is like chapter one of a three-part storyline. So I do hope that you enjoyed this review and commentary on Wolverine 31. Let me know in the comments to the video what you think about the story itself, what you think about uh, Mark Silvestri's art in this story. And if you enjoyed my review and commentary on the issue, please like the video on YouTube. It really helps the channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.